everybody, Pastor Brian, Refuge Church of Freedom. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We'll just get this gone and done right out the gate. Take a minute and hit that subscribe button. Hit the little ringer. Make sure that you're catching all of our videos and taking the time to watch and see what Refuge Church of Freedom is doing. Uh, we are also on Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook, Refuge Church of Freedom. You'll find the page that's got the cool Indian motorcycle on it. That would be mine. And uh, that would be our page. So, without further ado, go there and make sure you like all of our stuff. So, I told you in the previous videos, we were going to get into some topics. So today... We're going to get into some topics. So I thought, what better way to start this off than going through the seven deadly sins? We were probably going to go through the seven heavenly virtues also. But we'll start with the negative and end in the positive. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, just for clarification there will probably be some scriptural reference down the road uh, but this is more sharing about my personal struggles with each of these sins uh, and how i've overcome them so um, this is going to be more a relating point for you if if you need one so the first one we're going to start off with is probably the one that i struggle the most with <clears throat> that is going to be gluttony Gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins. Now, being a former drug addict and alcoholic, uh, obviously gluttony was a big one for me. But I'm not going to focus so much on that as I'm going to focus on food. Donut? No, thanks. Do you have any fruit? It tastes purple stuff inside. Purple is a fruit. Food is the one area that I am pretty gluttonous. Now, don't get me wrong. It's okay to have a good session with a set of tacos, you know. But <clears throat> what happens for me is it doesn't stop there. It just keeps repeating itself and repeating itself. And the next thing you know, I'm like 400 pounds and uh, not very healthy. So <clears throat> for me, one of the struggles that I have had in my um, personal self has always been with food. I use food to feel good. I use food to uh, take care of my feelings. I use food to get back at my wife. You know, if my wife makes me upset, you know, I'll go and eat a large pizza just because I think that I'm making her angry that way. Uh, food is comforting. Um, food, of course, tastes good, you know. Uh, but there's always like a consequence, you know. I try to eat a very sugarless diet. And when I slip up and have sugar, not only do I get like a stomach ache, um, but then it takes like three days of detox to get off the sugar. So, so let's talk about gluttony. So gluttony for me is that obsession to continue to eat food and eat food and eat food and to be gluttonous with my food. Um, there are occasions when I feel like it's okay to let myself go in this way. Uh, for instance, when the wife and I sit down to have a Korean barbecue dinner, uh, yeah, there ain't no way I'm having self-control that night. Where gluttony becomes a problem is when it's the next night, and the night after that, and the night after that, and the night after, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> one of the things that I've had to do is one i've had to change my thought process about food uh, i look at food nowadays as a tool uh, not as a comfort um, and where that came from is i used to be an amateur strongman i used to train uh, very very heavy heavy weights uh, heavy lifting a lot of a lot of gym sessions going on and i was eating eight thousand calories a day while i was doing this now the mind state in that was not gluttonous because if you want big muscles and you want to be strong, you have to put a lot of food in. So it's then that I decided that I was going to see food as a tool. <clears throat> so I took the time and made this a tool. 
Today, it is still a tool. Um, I believe that through proper food, you can help have health things go away. I believe through proper food, you can have more energy, you can have more freedom in your life, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Now, the thing that can be gluttonous in your life is if you obsess over this. Have you ever seen those people that are just in the gym 24 seven, never eat bad food, never let, give themselves a day off, never do any of that stuff. That's still being gluttonous. That's absolutely still being gluttonous. You're just being gluttonous on something else. So another word obviously is obsessive, right? So we have to be careful in these areas, you know, and all things in moderation, right? That's what we hear all the time. Now, in my case, there's a lot of things I don't do in moderation, like drugs and alcohol, because that's just bad for me. Um, so overcoming my gluttonous spirit also took a lot of prayer and a lot of faith in the Lord to give him the insecurities and the feelings and the hurts and the things that I had going on in my life uh, that caused me to overeat. Uh, that was really important for me to turn that over to him. And now through that, through the deliverance and through, you know, changing my mind states about food, I've actually been able to enjoy food in the way that food should be enjoyed because there's really nothing better than sitting around with your family, having food, enjoying a dessert, doing all that stuff. That's fantastic. You should do that. that that's like, that's all American right there, baby, you know? So you should do that. But what carries on after that is where gluttony kicks in. So the things that I've done to overcome gluttony. Um, I have changed my spiritual precepts about it and my mental and my physical. Um, yeah, there was some days that I, I went through some hunger and uh, it was teaching my body to run with less fuel uh, was teaching my body to run with different fuel. Um, there are all sorts of different diets out there. I've done them all, never lost any weight. Um, I'd go 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I think I did the ketonic diet. I lost 30 or 40 pounds on that, um, <clears throat> which was good, but I had such a lack of energy from that. My body just needs carbs to run. So, and that, that comes a lot from the strong man training. You know, there was a heavy carb load all the time. So, at any rate, gluttony can be anything that you are overdoing in your life right now. If your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, if you can't do anything without them, you might have some gluttony going on for that person. If you cannot get through a day without 16 cups of coffee, that's gluttony right there, happening right there, right in front of your face, you know? For me, I've trained myself in that area. I have two cups of coffee, one in the morning and one in the mid morning, and I drink decaf. I don't even drink caffeinated. Um, that's because caffeine makes me kind of irritable. So, um, and then I drink water. I drink water all day long. I put sodas aside. I put juices, all that stuff. I, I kicked it all to the curb. I drink water. Uh, I do do sports drinks, uh, occasional Gatorade, Zeros, and that kind of stuff, just when I need it to uh, recharge the um, the workout. You know, I need to get those, uh, what do they call those things, back in there. Anyways, somebody Google it and you'll figure it out. So, um, at any rate, so if you feel like you are struggling with a gluttonous spirit, I'd like you to join me in this prayer. Jesus, I come to you now. And I ask you to remove the spirit of gluttony from me. I ask you to cleanse me and purify me. I ask you to help my body, my spirit, my soul, and my mind to serve you. I ask you to give me the ability to show people the attraction of Christianity and not promote it. I ask you today, Father God, to forgive me if I put anything above you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a reminder. Sundays, El Cajon, California, 592 Broadway Street. Come join us. If you like what I've said here, you'll get even more. God bless. Pastor Brian.